waging war MJ on corruption. Severing all its business ties with Trump in the last hour, Brooke, and this is because there have been calls for days from Hispanic leaders saying, how can you be in business with this man if he is calling Mexican immigrants rapists and killers? Billionaire and presidential candidate Donald Trump has been lambasted by NBC and Univision for these comments. The U.S. has become a dumping ground for everybody else's problems. True. When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. True. They're not sending you. They're not sending you. They're sending people that have lots of problems. True. And they're bringing those problems with us. They're bringing drugs. They're bringing crime. They're rapists. And some, I assume, are good people. But I speak to border guards, and they tell us what we're getting. And it only makes common sense. It's coming from all over South and Latin America, and it's coming probably, probably from the Middle East. But we don't know, because we have no protection, and we have no competence. We don't know what's happening. And it's got to stop. And it's got to stop fast. Islamic terrorism is eating up large portions of the Middle East. They become rich. I'm in competition with them. They just built a hotel in Syria. Can you believe this? They built a hotel. When I have to build a hotel, I pay interest. They don't have to pay interest because they took the oil that when we left Iraq, I said we should have taken. So now ISIS has the oil. Donald Trump is now second in the New Hampshire and Iowa polls among likely caucus goers, and is standing by his misrepresented comments on immigration, rape, and crime. And now, with my statements on immigration, which happen to be correct, uh, they are going to take a different stance, and that's okay. Misrepresented comments, which are unfortunately true. Thomas didn't find the man he was looking for, but something far worse. Thomas says he found 47-year-old Martin Vasquez in the act of raping a six-year-old girl. Officers say neighbors told them that several of the neighborhood children play in Vasquez's backyard. Spokeswoman for the Davidson County Sheriff's Office said USADA was in this country illegally. Gurau Aguilar faces three counts of aggravated sexual battery of a person under the age of 13. Jacobo Gurau faces this is one count of rape of a person under the age of 13. Police believe 19-year-old Sergio Perez, an illegal immigrant, attacked the woman in her home Sunday. 418 children were raped by illegals in the state of North Carolina in the month of August 2014 alone. Another drug investigation led to a shootout that left a deputy wounded and a police informant dead. It all started with this big rig filled with marijuana. Well, you mentioned the 18-wheeler. We had 300 pounds of marijuana or more. And obviously Obviously, a homicide, all in front of an entrance to a quiet neighborhood. The Pinal County Sheriff asking President Obama to send troops. Sheriff Paul Babu says Mexican drug cartels now control parts of Arizona all the way up to Metro Phoenix. Drug cartels control this area, and this is unacceptable. And local law enforcement cannot handle and stop this on our own. This latest move details that not only does NBC reinstate known liars like Brian Williams, they are also in the big business of controlling the narrative, whether or not American lives are in grave danger. And it just goes to show how far Americans will be diverted from a hardcore reality in the name of supposed political correctness. An insouciant generation will inherit a country on track to go down harder than Greece where our immigration policies allow thousands of foreign felons to be released onto the streets of America while an epidemic of child rape goes largely ignored in their own backyards. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! You don't want the truth because deep down in places you don't talk about at parties. You want me on that wall. You need me on that wall. We use words like honor, code, Loyalty. We use these words as the backbone of a life spent defending something. You use them as a punchline. John Bound for Infowars.com. Ladies and gentlemen, we're live. Thank you so much for joining us on this Sunday, already the fifth day of July, 2015, global broadcast. 
I am your host, Alex Jones. We'll be here for the next two hours as we are every Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. Central. We're back weekdays, of course, live, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central, and re-aired many on, on many of these same stations. There are a lot of obviously important news items to go over today, but the first one is in projections, and with uh, most of the votes now counted and cast, Greece has voted not to go along with the fourth round of austerity measures that we've seen since 2008 with the island nation. The private central banks are announcing they're going to start basically just taking the money out of citizens' bank accounts directly. So this is global government with private banks that control the European Union, not even needing the front uh, of the rubber stamp government, but directly doing it themselves. Greeks are only allowed 20 euros or about $22 a day out of their bank accounts. It doesn't matter if you have a billion euros or 10,000 euros or 500 euros or 14 euros in your bank account. You're only allowed to get 22 out and they are basically threatening to shut down tourism to the country and engage in economic blockades. There's two different sides to this, and both sides really get it wrong. Some say the Greeks are a bunch of lazy socialists who have too big a pension funds and only work three, four days a week, and that uh, they need austerity, and they need to pay back their debts. And then others say, no, it's all the big central banks. They're the bad guys. They're just looting the country, uh, and Greece deserves to default on this. The truth is in between that. The big private six global banks are predatory, do promote a culture of overspending, do finance all over the world from the U.S. to Greece, the election. They finance the election of politicians that will put countries into debt. But it's true that the Greek people in the last 50 years have taken the bait and gotten into this. Uh, they're not as lazy in general as the media says. When you drill down to the actual numbers, they work pretty darn hard. But, but at the same time, some of their governmental pensions are too large. But what the big banks do is they hold countries hostage to the governing class and to them by saying, you either go along with all the new taxes and regulations we want to put in place, or everyone's going to lose your pension funds, you're going to lose your currency itself, your society's going to collapse. Now, Greece's big problem is the globalists win either way until their entire paradigm is overthrown. You see, we've watched the IMF and World Bank, which are just global arms of the private Federal Reserve. We've watched them in countless African, Latin American, Asian, and other European and Eastern European countries, and Russia for that matter. We've watched them go in and leverage up taxes and regulations to an outrageous level that everybody knows will bankrupt the economy, so people default... Then the international financial system that's predatory pulls out and the country completely collapses. And then a few years later, those same interests come in, buying everything up for pennies on the dollar. All of Europe is bankrupt. The United States is bankrupt. It's not just Puerto Rico that is bankrupt here in the United States, but California, Illinois, Michigan. And this is not debated, by the way. Depending on how you look at the numbers, the average American, when they're born, owes between a million and two million dollars. Whether you're looking at unfunded mandates, actual debt, or the derivatives we've been signed on to that aren't ours. And that's really the biggest issue in this whole constellation, this whole table of, of, of factoids, 
is that a little country called Iceland, five years ago, and I had members of their parliament on, 400,000 people live in the country. Extremely first world, high education, high work ethic, bunch of Vikings. Produce a lot of the seafood that's on your table here in the United States. And they went from being this incredibly prosperous country overnight to being told that all of them collectively owed a little over 400,000 pounds because they were pegged to the British, pegged to the UK, somewhat. And we followed all this in great detail at the time. And so they began to investigate, and then they found out that most of that debt wasn't theirs, that they'd been signed on to derivatives that the UK had created and that their government had agreed to basically back and to basically bail out. And when they arrested their finance minister and other people and actually got into the documents, because it was all secret, like the TPP and NAFTA and GATT and all the rest of it, when they finally got into the documents, 93%, you can pull those headlines up, 93% of the debt wasn't even theirs. And they said, you know what, we'll pay the 7% back. So instead of 400,000 pounds, do the math, it was a lot less. And they were even able to cut taxes. And guess what? More money came in to their coffers within a year. Because when you cut taxes massively, it always, in a large economy, increases the actual money coming in. Because the economy speeds up. But the globalists want a consolidated economy. And so they rejected paying the $5 billion debt that was not theirs. And England... And the UK had headlines, Icelanders being listed as terrorists for nation not paying debt. British Airways to not allow Icelanders to use their airline. Well, they said, fine, go ahead and do that. And they had to back off. So similar things are now happening to the Greeks. We don't know what percentage they actually owe. Most economists think it's upwards of 90% isn't their debt. Uh, we know it's 91% in Ireland. That number's come out. Remember how Ireland 10 years ago was this big boom country and then they signed on to the euro and a few years later were bankrupt? This is done over and over again by the IMF and World Bank. There are African countries like Nigeria, look it up, that borrowed back in the 60s $3 billion. And on that $3 billion, last time I checked, they would paid $100 billion in debt service to the IMF and World Bank. I mean, if you buy a $300,000 house and you pay it off over 25 years, you only pay $600,000. That's still probably a ripoff, but it is 25 years. What about you borrow $3 billion and you pay back over $100 billion? And none of it fixes anything. You see, this, this is an anti-free market economy. It's a predatory, vulture capitalist, crony capitalist economy. Now, I got stopped this weekend not, by not one, not two, but three people saying, what about Donald Trump? And, and he's the big topic. And we did a report on the Nightly News four days ago, and I covered it a little bit this week. But we'll get into Donald Trump. Not that he really matters, but the story itself shows how the media operates. Because I don't trust Donald Trump. But what he said about very clearly, a five-year-old can understand it about Mexico's exporting its criminals here, that's admitted, and they're calling that racist. Kind of like not wanting Obamacare's racist, or not wanting to be run over by trucks racist. But first, we're going to look more at the aftermath of Greece with Paul Watson from England. The Texas Attorney General uh, is facing indictment charges. State police have been investigating him after Travis County and the Democrats and the Public Integrity Office, that's a joke, uh, called for an investigation and a grand jury is set to hear the evidence to indict the Attorney General. And I've gone and looked at what the supposed uh, evidence is and it's the same thing with Tom DeLay and the rest of it. The way they write securities laws at the state and federal level, anyone involved in stock trading or selling any type of instrument is breaking laws. There's just no way, and I'm not defending him because he's a Republican, 
uh, the guy has been really trying to get our power plants turned back on. Uh, he has been trying to get our gold back. He advised the governor to ask for the billion dollars of gold back from New York. He's been really trying to fight to shut down uh, third trimester abortion clinics. And this is the Justice Department, basically, from what I've been told and intel we've got is, has basically infiltrated the state police uh, and is taking the state of Texas over. I mean, this is a, they'll probably indict the governor next. I mean, just get ready. This is just the country we live in. They'll probably knock on wood and set me up. And then it'll be everybody else after that matter. You'll have to try to get out of the country. You've ever crossed these crooks. I mean, they're just taking us down. And um, most people are joining with Sauron. They're just making that decision. And I mean, he, he might have done something, but it just, you know, Dinesh D'Souza just got out of prison for doing stuff that Hillary Clinton literally does a million times more. Hillary takes money from dictators when she's the head of the State Department to then take the restrictions off to sell them millions in weapons. And then Dinesh D'Souza goes to a party, a political party, and gets his friends to give money to a senator. And they went, well, technically, you weren't officially a PAC, so you didn't fill out the forms. You're going to jail. What a load of bull. A guy that wrote speeches for Ronald Reagan, helps kids, never had a criminal record, and he makes a movie bigger than Michael Moore, so they throw him in prison. If they threw Michael Moore in prison on trumped-up charges, if Bush did, I'd come out and defend him, and I don't like him. I mean, this is dangerous, folks. And that's why Congress goes along with all this tyranny, because they're scared. They have appointed leaders in Greece. They have appointed leaders in Italy. They've been appointing leaders in other countries. The EU has an unelected bureaucracy that makes the decisions. The, the, the EU parliament is ceremonial and can only make recommendations. England never voted, the UK never voted to enter the EU under the Maastricht Treaty, which was secret at first, but they did. Just like we're going under TPP that's secret. This government has been taken over by foreign interest. That is not rhetoric. That actually happened. And now the people all the world are waking up. Greece has voted 60 plus percent, and they still haven't counted all the votes, but they say it's a done deal. Stock markets globally are already going down over this because here's the deal. They want to feed all wealth into these six central banks or they threaten to bring down the whole world economy. Well, they're bringing it down anyways. Do you understand it's Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, and a couple other big banks that are pretty much foreign-owned that are lobbying? They're the ones funding transgender education. They're the ones funding open borders. They're the ones funding taking your guns. They're the ones that own the media creating race war. It's not just Soros, it's the Ford Foundation and Carnegie that are financing stuff, you know, attack the police and all this bull. And the cops run around arresting patriots all day, scared to death following orders. It's about intimidating them into submission. It's a takeover, folks. Do you understand Soros and others finance overthrows of governments all the time? Ukraine was the last one. And what you see in Syria and Egypt and Libya. I mean, we have bad people in control. Really wicked. Really bad. And now Texas is starting to do things with elected, clean statesmen who know what's going on. And the globalists know they know. So they're going to start indicting everybody. And by the way, they'll indict them even if they backed off because the globalists don't care. They hate anybody good. Now, Paul Watson joins us for this segment and the next. Uh, he is actually in Europe reporting. He's normally in London. Uh, he's actually on the continent of Europe uh, reporting for us so he can get video and photos in the next few days if these bank runs spread. Uh, but uh, there have been a lot of threats, Paul by the globalists that they'll shut Greece down, won't allow food to be imported, and engage in war crimes. Uh, embargoing food is a war crime under the Geneva Convention. Uh, that is in the Financial Times. They may embargo food. And the images of people only able to get 22 euros out a day. 70% uh, of Americans believe the news media is intentionally biased. Well, it's, it's a lot worse than that. 
And they've got us all obsessing on Donald Trump right now, not on this, but this affects the entire world right now. Official projection shows no winning in Greek referendum to not have the fourth bailout because there's no way to even pay it. It like puts huge taxes on tourism designed to kill them, designed to shut them down. Greece, no vote to spark haven rush as Europe slips. Greek banks prepare plan to raid deposits to avert collapse. That's the Financial Times of London, not Alex Jones. I told you that was coming. They're getting bail-ins ready here, where they just take the money out of your account. This is global government by the banksters. Trillion-dollar stock managers see chaos on Greek no vote. Bloomberg. Greek pollsters forecast narrow no win. Yep, they were correct. That's just some of the news up on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. And, of course, DrudgeReport.com is covering it as well. Let's look at Drudge. Euro falls after Greek votes. Banks prepare to raid deposits. Panic residents stock up on essentials. Quadrant of crisis threatens Europe's core. We're going to go over that article. Merkel, Hollande, call for summit. Brussels weighs next steps. It's impossible to ever pay it back. They know it. And they want to bring out of this crisis new EU powers to rule by fiat over the states. They set up the euro to bring in a crisis to consolidate power. Paul Joseph Watson reporting from Europe, from France precisely. We're going to probably send him to Greece in the next few days. Paul Joseph Watson joins us uh, again in France on his way to Greece. Paul Watson, tell us what you've got coming up. <coughs> Well, I think the key point here, Alex, is it's a crushing defeat for global government, as you said. And, you know, I've been writing about this for the past couple of weeks, again, on InfoWars. And it, not many Americans are interested. You know, the articles get 200 comments, maybe, in comparison to the usual, you know, eight, nine hundred, a thousand that we get. But as you said, this is a major issue. And we have to remember that this shutdown of the Greek banks, which occurred over the past week, was not a decision by the Greek government. It was forced on them by the Troika, and we can get into the fallout. You'll the have break. the floor when we come back, and we'll look at the quadrant of crises that are threatening Europe's core. Because believe me, this is going to move into the U.S., this is going to move into the rest of the world. The very bankers that have maneuvered us in this position will use it as a power grab. The anatomy of a inverted reality. In the next segment, we're going to look at the whole controversy with Donald Trump saying that Mexico and the rest of the world are importing their criminals here. Fidel Castro, back in the early 80s, publicly ordered the criminals dumped on boats and sent here. It'd be like if you said that the sun came up in the morning and that's racist. But this is the triumph of political correctness. Because a lot of weak-minded people then go, yeah, that's outrageous. I need to say it's great that they just released another 36,000 violent felon illegals for rape, arson, armed robbery, assault with deadly weapons, you name it. In fact, I meant to send it in yesterday. It was even on CNN. The headline, man deported five times. Arrested for murder. And he's a crazy killer from Mexico. And he just went to the boardwalk in San Francisco and just shot a guy's daughter for fun. And I couldn't believe it when CNN actually reported on it. Because I see this stuff every day in my stacks, local news around the country. Uh, yeah, there it is. Man arrested in connection with San Francisco killing had been deported several times, officials say Fox News. Uh, yeah, it was five times. We go back to the CNN. Oh, look, CNN's changed the headline since I saw it yesterday morning. Imagine he'd been deported five times for robbery, assault, you name it. There it is, have been deported five times. It's not illegal Mexican deported five times for violent crimes. And he went out and killed her probably because she was white. We've got a bunch of new knockout game uh, footage of veterans 
on on canes and crushes being attacked by racist black people because they're white. And it's never in the national news because it doesn't fit with the narrative that whites are 25 times more likely, and you can the numbers vary as high as 40. I say 12 sometimes. It's how you look at crime statistics. But you're 25 times more likely if you're white to be attacked by a black male. And I'm not attacking black people. It's just a fact. And, and, and I want to hold Paul in the next segment to talk about this because I'm just digressing right now when I talk about the Donald Trump thing because this ties into it. I mean, it's the inversion of reality. And it's the Democratic Party has successfully created vicious anti-white hatred when America is already majority minority in most areas where people actually think shooting or killing white people is cute and funny. And when it happens, it's not even hardly in the news. But when it happens to black people, you think it's the end of the world. Well, you know what? I think it's the end of the world when anybody gets killed in cold blood. So that's all coming up. But the fact that we can't talk about every criminal in the world that's running, the best place is to come here. Just like if you commit murder, the best place to run is to Mexico, at least it used to be, because they didn't have extradition. I mean, nobody ever debated that bank robbers and people, I don't care what color they were, predominantly white in the old days, would run to Mexico. I mean, it just no one d denies you run to another country when you've committed a murder. But it's racist to say that we have one of the biggest exoduses of criminals influxing into this country, committing every heinous crime you can imagine, and they're above the law, and nobody even knows their name, like that railway killer, mainly killed Hispanics. I said I'd cover it in the next segment. I'm going to get into the Donald Trump thing. Paul, I'm ranting. I apologize. Thank you for coming on on Sunday evening. Uh, I know you're looking at going to Greece. Uh, you're one of our top reporters, and I really think to have you there reporting uh, on the front lines uh, would be a great thing. Uh, I personally am looking to going to Greece uh, in the next few weeks if this continues to deteriorate. It's just too big a story. And imagine what's going to happen in the rest of the EU where it's still big news but not as big as it should be. And here, when the next big financial meltdown happens, you know, all, basically all the top experts we talk to say it's imminent. Ron Paul was on a few days ago, said the same thing. I hope they're all wrong. But all of the ingredients, the atmosphere, all of the indicators show that. Do you think that, the, what, what do you expect to come out of this? Did the EU want Greece to default to get more power? Uh, you usually have got your finger on the pulse, Watson. What exactly is going on there? Well, it was obvious that they expected a yes vote. You go from the start of this, really, to pick it up at the point where they closed the banks. I mean, a lot of people think that the Greek government made the decision to close the banks and restrict everyone to, you know, 60 euros a day. That wasn't the case. The Troika engaged in financial terrorism, according to the Greek finance minister, Yanis Varoufakis, who said, well, why did they force us to close the banks? To instill fear in people and spreading fear is called terrorism. They were trying to, in fact, we have that clip, we can play it. They were trying to instill fear, very well said. And they're trying to also create instability where, where investors pull out of Greece so they can come in and buy it up cheaper. This is in the IMF World Bank documents that got leaked in 2002. They call it the IMF riot, Paul. And so explain to people what a troika is. It's ruled by three. We're ruled by the nine ring race, the Supreme Court, and their master, Obama, the Sauron. Uh, but, but explain what a troika is and that they're now announcing they're going to start just grabbing people's money out of their bank accounts. This is why they want the world on a cashless society because then they'll rule everything. Exactly. The troika is the IMF, the ECB and the Eurogroup finance ministers. And they ordered Greece to close the banks under threat of financial terrorism the exact same way, remember, back in 2008 and with the subsequent bailouts that they threatened, you know, there would be martial law on the streets of America if Congress and the Senate didn't pass that bill for the bailout. So they used the exact same tactic, and they expected this to accomplish a yes vote. And you know that from what Goldman Sachs said before this vote took place. Goldman Sachs came out with an advisory and said, quote, on balance, we see a yes outcome as more likely. 
And remember, this is what the media has been pushing for the last week. The inevitability of a yes vote was constantly pushed by the media because they thought the vote would be close. And by trying to control this narrative, they thought they could shift it over to yes very easily. It didn't turn out to be the case. So this is, is a failure because they're not invincible. The euro was always meant to implode nation states and consolidate them. But is this an uncontrolled implosion, Paul? Yeah, but just listen to what Goldman Sachs said before this vote. Quote, the closure of the banks and resulting liquidity squeeze on the Greece private sector has served to concentrate voters' minds on the gravity of the situation, bringing the broader question of Greece, Greece's place in Europe to the fore and thus ultimately favoring a yes vote. So they admittedly so you, terrorized them yeah. by destroying their, 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 their markets and robbing their money and, and restricting what they could take out to, quote, focus their minds. Yeah, you don't need to read be between the lines very hard to know that that's basically them admitting that they forced them to close the banks to create the panic, as you said before, with this IMF riot. In fact, they expected more riots. Um, Varoufakis, the Greek finance minister, gave an interview with Channel 4 where he made the point that it contradicted all the predictions that they would there would be civil unrest on the streets of Athens, on the streets of Greece, after they were forced to close the banks. It didn't happen. That's what the Troika wanted because that would have made more people vote yes. As it turns out, it's 60-40. It's a landslide for the no's. This is basically the threat of a good example. Now France, Spain, England, all the other countries are going to look at getting out of the euro, and it's a major threat. So the EU government. dictatorship is in trouble. Watson, finish up with us, then I want to get into the knockout game, uh, which is basically attacking, in some cases, murdering white people, uh, being considered a new liberal sacrament uh, that must be protected as cultural prize. So it is a giant no to the EU. And now the headlines around the world are the EU is on the brink of collapsing. Paul Joseph Watson is our guest. We have a clip here that is Greece's finance minister. Uh, the BBC carried the piece, breaking down the fact that uh, either way, whether it passed or it didn't pass, the whole thing is a fraud. I think it's a powerful one minute, 38 second clip. All that needs to happen is for the ECP to get a green light from us politicians in Europe, in the Eurogroup, that an agreement has been reached and an agreement will be reached. Whether a yes or a no uh, comes up through the ballot box. If it's a yes, it will be a bad agreement. The banks will open with a bad agreement and you will be back here discussing with my, my successor, because it won't be me, the terrible negotiations that will begin again under very similar circumstances. So is that saying if you will no, step down? If a no wins, we are going to have another agreement which will be viable along the lines of proposals made to us in the last few days. This is a terrible thing about Europe. We have a very bad system of governance in Europe. Uh, this is not a way to run a monetary union. This is a travesty. It's a comedy of errors. For five years now, Europe has been extending and pretending, uh, and we said no to this. The program that they've imposed upon this country, and which they want to continue imposing the same logic here, um, is, go is going to go down in economic history as the greatest cock-up ever. What we're saying to the Greek people is this. Here's a proposal by the institutions. We consider this to be a, a bad proposal. But it's up to you to decide whether we accept it or not. What does this mean? It means that if they say yes, we will go through with this proposal. We will make sure that it passes through Parliament House. You will. You and your uh, government. I, what I said was, we will make sure that the people's verdict is respected. Uh, that doesn't mean I'm going to be the Minister of Finance. I'm not going to be the Minister of Finance because I cannot put my signature on an, an agreement which I consider to be non-viable and quite catastrophic, both for Greece and for the Eurozone. But see, it's meant to be catastrophic for the Eurozone and Greece. It was designed to suck countries dry, and then out of the collapse of the three global unions, this is the trilateralist plan, we've known this since they set it up in the 70s, out of the collapse comes the world government. And people always say, this is horrible, it doesn't work. If you jack up taxes on tourism, it'll kill what Greece has left. That's the plan. And then no one ever discusses that most of the debt is global uh, derivatives that the countries have been signed on to. Paul Watson. Well, yeah, and if you look at the, the dates, Greece would have been on the hook for this 
for these austerity measures, this VAT, high taxes, until at least 2045, if not beyond. So they would have just been kicking the can down the road over and over again with these huge debt payments. Their economy wouldn't have recovered. But going back to the referendum, Varoufakis also said, he basically outlined the fact that the EU, the Troika, were horrified, absolutely horrified that the Greek people would even be given the vote in the first place. He said, quote, the very idea that government would consult its people on a problematic proposal put to it by the institutions was treated with incomprehension and often disdain bordering on contempt by the Troika. So they were just flabbergasted that they would even dare to have this referendum in the, in the first place. God forbid the cradle of democracy would put this to a vote to the people. So now they expected them all to vote yes, because they engaged in financial terrorism and forced them to close all the banks. Now that it's a no landslide, they're basically running around like headless chickens. We've got JP Morgan now saying that this is going to lead to Greece's exit from the euro. It's going to provide a, a good example for other countries if their economy recovers, if they go back to the drachma. And now we've got other quotes from Eurogroup finance ministers who say, they have no idea what to discuss after this stunning result. So their hubris, their arrogance clearly led them to believe that through media propaganda and financial terrorism, they could influence this vote. And Martin Armstrong, the economist, even suggested they may rig it um, to, to, to go yes. And it's gone completely the opposite way. They've completely been defeated. And now they're running around like headless chickens, not knowing what to do. The biggest takeaway from this, Paul, and I want to get your takeaway, what you think is most important, but the biggest takeaway is we know how they're coming at us in the 21st century and in the near future in the UK, in the near future in Canada, the United States and other areas. They're going to come after the savers. They're going to come after private pensions. They're going to grab all the cash we've got in the bank. They are going to embargo uh economic systems that are still viable to prop up an impossible to prop up 2.2 quadrillion global derivatives market when the most insolvent people in the world are the big six banks that are dominant because they created counterfeit instruments that make Bernie Madoff look like an angel at the pearly gates. It is just so crazy that they're the ones running the planet. They're the ones funding ISIS publicly. The big banks are in mainstream news owning the aircraft that ship the drugs around. I mean, they are just so darn criminal. They want a global system with no borders, so they're above the law, while all of us live in squalor. I mean, they are just the scum of the earth. While they work around the clock, to, quote, keep economies from overheating, that means from creating new wealth and economies growing so fast they can't keep us in debt. They are the plague. What is your biggest takeaway from this, and what do you expect to see now in Europe? Because we've now seen Iceland out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, and now we've seen Greece say no. The right-wing media that's not right-wing, that's controlled opposition, fascist, just like the left is fascist, controlled opposition. It's the same poison, just different flavors of Kool-Aid. I guess one's grape and one's cherry, or one's coconut and one's, uh, you know, apple. I mean, it's all poison, and it's got the same cyanide in it. And they're going, these lazy commie Greeks, pay your debt! It's not their debt in almost every case. We've seen... Uh, the excuses for grabbing money out of bank accounts in the bail-in uh, in a nearby island to Greece, uh, you know, just a few years ago. Uh, so, so we see this continuing over and over again, uh, Paul. And of course, I'm talking about Cyprus. Yeah, and remember in Cyprus, the um, the so-called haircut, which is the biggest euphemism I've ever heard was on deposits over 100,000 euros. They took 30%, 37% on deposits over 100,000 euros. In Greece, they were talking about taking roughly the same amount on deposits over 8,000 euros. Good God. So 
that that, that wasn't even you know people who were you know moderately successful lower middle class that was anybody with basically any savings whatsoever and let's be clear the very same oligarchs technocrats in their own words run this country they will run the exact same plays on us and have got the government and the media up there acting like all this is legitimate getting us ready for the gang rape so i hate to use a gross analogy but they are trying in the media to get us ready for this and are trying to bring out the bottles of lubrication yeah, and remember, there were people, prominent people within the EU saying, how dare you canvass the Greek people? We're just going to install another technocratic government that's directly answerable to us that doesn't even represent the Greek people. They don't even vote for it. And again, that is the model, not only for Europe, but for, the, for America as well, for the North American Union, installed technocrats that we no longer even vote for no matter the fact that they're already corrupt and it's, you know, a revolving door between, you know, the corporate oligarchy and government. But we don't even get a chance to vote for them anymore. They're just directly installed by the Troika, by the global central banks. That's their model for the world. And that's what Greece has been all about. Paul, I know that you're on the continent of Europe right now and it's about 10 or 11 at night. Um, but stay there for a couple more segments because I want to get your take on what they're distracting us with in the West. Because again, it's bigger than Donald Trump. By demonizing him for saying the truth, what precedent does it set? We're gonna play clips, go through it all. Jeb Bush's response, look at election 2016, coming up with Paul Watson joining us from Europe. I'm Alex Jones from deep in the heart of Texas, infowars.com. We have free shipping on books, videos, Patriot apparel, uh, high quality nutraceuticals, shortwave radios, everything, hundreds and hundreds of items at InfoWarsStore.com in the month of July, and your purchase funds the tip of the spear in the InfoWar. You know, I've got two daughters, and it makes me not even get angry or nauseous. I mean, I have those feelings. It's just, it makes me ask, why is our government so evil? Why is it run by such incredible scum? I'm reading a CNN article that I, again, have trouble believing they would actually tell the truth because I see these articles every few days around the country because just the psychos of the world are coming here to vacation, you name it, to just kill people. In fact, vacation killing is something the government tries to keep quiet, but it's huge. Uh, the stabbings, the attacks in downtown Austin... The rapes, uh, the police are told, cover that up, keep that quiet. I mean, it, it, it's just it's just amazing. Suspect in killing of San Francisco woman had been deported five times. People took photos after he shot her on the boardwalk at San Francisco and was glowering, enjoying it. The young lady turned to her father and said, Dad, I don't feel good before collapsing and dying. She said, Dad, I've been shot. I don't feel good and collapsed. And he just shot her, according to witnesses, for fun. And why not? He had five previous felonies for a whole range of criminal activities. And the San Francisco Sheriff's Department says in the article, we are to release him. We are not to deport him. And, we, and, and, the, uh, the, uh, and that they'd already asked him a month ago to be picked up. I'm going to read over some of this article and humanize this lady. And that they said, no, we're releasing him. And they're talking about him being released again. <laughs> uh, I mean, obviously, they're going to probably charge him with murder. But they're saying separate from that, they're not going to give him to the feds. And you got 800 plus sanctuary cities and they act like it's this cool quaintness because, you know, you don't want to be racist. So. My gosh, I mean, you can't even have Donald Trump say that we're the dumping ground for criminals, which is totally true and admitted and all over the news. So San Francisco's got to let him go. The hit and runs, the drunk driving, just the above the law craziness. And San Francisco's too busy celebrating gay marriage. And my whole point is, is, We've just entered the twilight zone. I mean, it's, 
whatever you think about gay marriage, that's all we talk about. I was at a party last night. I'm going to Watson. In the next segment, I'm going to get his take on the Trump thing. And there were all these liberals that I've known my whole life that are my parents' friends. They got conservative friends, but they grew up in the 60s, so about half their friends are super liberal. And a bunch of them looked at me because they were over watching the fireworks, and they said, you know, Alex, now I get everything you're talking about. My God, you think we're planet gay. I mean, all we hear about is gay marriage, gay marriage, gay marriage. And, and, and I mean, clearly they're now going after people that aren't gay and there's no room for us. And, and that's what it is. I mean, it's just a cult of craziness. It has nothing to do with, quote, being gay. It's just all about you have these rights to wear dresses if you're a man, and you have rights to have your sex change paid for. But by the way, we're going to let serial killers kill your family, and they won't get in trouble. Uh, Paul Watts, we're going to break, but a minute take on that situation. Well, with the Trump thing, I mean, Obama said something almost exactly the same. He said he talked about dangerous people who are gangbangers or criminals coming over from Mexico via illegal immigration. There was absolutely no backlash whatsoever against Obama. Trump comes out and basically says the same thing, and it's, you know, everybody's up in arms about it. So again, it's, it's about how they direct this outrage. They create these outrage mobs on Twitter, on other social media. That filters through into the mainstream media, and they're adept at doing that at this point, which is how a lot of this race-baiting uh, really divides the country, and we can get more into that after the break. I agree with you, Paul, but it's beyond race baiting and the terms you and I use. It's just total mental illness where there's this alternate reality where these people are experts on petty, ninnying nothingness, and they all just fight with each other all day while we're being screwed over. It's just an alternate reality. Well, uh, that is exemplified by what a major university in Wisconsin considers to be racist. And we can get into that list. After That's the right. Break, Stay there. It? We're going to go to break. At the very start of the broadcast, we aired a four and a half minute news piece from InfoWars Nightly News uh, last Thursday night. Dealing with the whole Donald Trump controversy. And within that piece, there's a clip of what Trump originally said a week and a half ago. And you would think this is the most important issue in the world. Obviously, Trump is a PR master. Obviously, the guy gets into these elections to basically uh, promote his TV shows uh, and his casinos and his name. I don't trust Donald Trump as far as I can throw an elephant, a papa elephant. That said, I don't think Donald Trump hates America and hates our basic freedoms. And I think pretty much everything Donald Trump says makes sense and is truthful. I mean, stuff he says is very accurate. He's a smart guy. I agree with probably 95% of what Donald Trump says. The problem is the guy's tied in with a lot of really seedy people, obviously. I mean, come on, he owns casinos. He's in deep with the establishment, and he's as phony as a $3 bill. If anybody is a ringer to take Republican votes away and then to ensure that a second candidate doesn't get in there like Rand Paul uh, against Jeb, and then Jeb can be the ringer for Hillary, if anybody doesn't see that fixes in, they're blind. And they're smoking dope. Now, that said, I'm going to talk about Trump now, but in the next segment, I'm going to actually read from CNN about a story I mentioned earlier that is bone chilling. Suspect in killing of San Francisco woman had been deported five times for aggravated felonies and they were going to deport him a month before he killed this man's daughter right in front of him, just shot her for fun. And San Francisco says they will still not give him to the feds to be deported. I'd be some thought they'd get to do that now so you just get away. We have an exchange program. Our criminals run down to Mexico. Their criminals run up here. That's just a truthful statement. Obama, a few years ago, famously came out, remember, and said Mexican gangbangers are coming up here. Mexico has collapsed, basically, and is a failed state in most areas because of the criminality. Oh, 
it's racist that we don't want to merge with Mexico. If they were like Switzerland, I'd want to. Let me tell you, if, if the Swiss were brown-skinned, I wouldn't care. They were black-skinned as long as they were safe and free and wealthy. In fact, I wish Mexico was some wonderful free country. I'd probably leave the U.S. The problem is there's nowhere to run to, but this is the way they attack information. With a dumbed-down, mindless public, oh, we're not going to deal with the libertarians against Obamacare that has death panels and wait lists and federalization of health care and insurance company rate hikes written by them. We're just going to call you racist if you're not for it. And we're not going to sit there and actually debate the fact that guns make crime go down and all the statistics. We're just going to say you're racist as well or sexist. And we're not going to debate that five-year-olds shouldn't be taught, quote, sex education that Heather has two mommies or two daddies or a mommy and a daddy. I mean, what's going on here? What's the sexualization? We'll just call you sexist. No, I'm tired of you setting a whole agenda and lecturing to me. So now Donald Trump is, quote, in all this trouble. And this, if they're able to damage him and damage anyone that criticizes the fact that Mexico has turned into a crime sewer with a pipeline directly to the United States, along with every other country, then this country deserves what it gets. I mean, John Bowne has an excellent report, NBC Can't Handle the Truth. It's on Infowars.com that shows all the statistics, the news articles about the illegals pouring in. I mean, no, everybody knows about this, though. 36,000 aggravated felons in the last year have been released by the feds. You count counties and cities, it is incredible. But boy, they'll throw the book at a citizen if you're black, white, or Hispanic because they know you're a chump schmuck that'll pay all the fines and all the fees. Let's go to this Donald Trump clip that is supposedly so evil. The U.S. has become a dumping ground for everybody else's problems. It's true. When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. They're not sending you. They're not sending you. They're sending people that have lots of problems. That's right. And they're bringing those problems with us. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists, and some, I assume, are good people. But I speak to border guards, and they tell us what we're getting. And it only makes common sense. It's coming from all over South and Latin America, and it's coming probably, probably from the Middle East. But we don't know, because no we have no that. protection, and we have no competence. We don't know what's happening, and it's got to stop. That's right. And it's got to stop fast. Uh, that's good. And they'll run around and have checkpoints at the mall or checkpoints at a football game, but not at our border where you're supposed to have it. All right, Watson, uh, you've been a trooper riding with us here. I'm going to get to a Jeb Bush clip in a minute about Trump, who I believe he's playing the ringer for. And we've seen Trump do this type of stuff before. So, A, your take on Donald Trump. B, your take on this. I had three people this weekend, liberals, come up to me on the street and say, you don't like Donald Trump, do you? Boy, he's in a lot of trouble. Ah, ha, ha. Like they were having some fantasy victory. And I didn't even argue with them. I just said, well, I think Donald Trump's a, a, a shill. But at the same time, I mean, criminals do run here. I mean, is it racist to say two plus two equals four, Paul? Well, in, in the United States of insanity, yes, it is. But, I mean, I've read stories repeatedly about how the police just tell ranchers down there at the border who own all this land to just shoot the illegals dead because they're coming across in such numbers that the police just don't have the time or the resources to patrol all this land. And basically, there's just an understanding between the police and the ranchers. If somebody violates your private property if they come on your land just shoot them dead and then we'll deal with the aftermath that's how bad it's got well that's because of all violent the arson crime. and the attacks by the illegals yeah yeah violent crime is going down in america the only segment of it going up is these gangbangers as obama called them and the illegal immigrants that's one of the few areas where it's actually going up so he's basically pointing out a, a problem that's existing everybody knows it's a major problem um, a lot of the polls show that huge opposition to illegal immigration is held by Hispanics themselves who have legally entered the country, middle class business owners and so forth. 
So this idea that it's racist simply to draw attention to that problem is complete insanity at this point. What do you think about Trump? I think, as he said, he's obviously probably a narcissist trying to draw attention to his own business interests, taking away a lot of the vote from Rand Paul, which the polls show that out of all the candidates, he may not be the number one, but he's the most likely to have a chance at defeating Hillary Clinton, oh, Hillary. which, of course, we know the establishment fears. So he's there, as you said, as a ringer to, to uh, take attention away, take votes away from Rand Paul. I don't believe he's inherently corrupt or evil in that sense. But Do you agree that Jeb is a ringer for Hillary? Yeah, I can't, I can't believe for a second that it would be a Clinton versus Bush. It, it just seems too beyond the pale. Um, but definitely, I think, you know, people are saying Scott Walker is in with the best chance. But again, if you match them up against Hillary, they've got a 10-point deficit. So at this point, unless something radical happens, it's right. going to be Hillary and A lot of real liberals would vote for Rand Paul. He could win. He could govern her. Uh, Govern, we need Rand Paul. I mean, and that's in the polls. You're absolutely right. Paul, great job at InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. Thank you so much. We're going to be right back. We're going to be right back on the other side uh, with more on Trump, more on the election. Stay with us. CNBC reports the Dow Jones futures are down 252, S&P 500 down 30 after Greek no vote to continue to raise taxes and pay off debts that are untenable. The United States has a debt that's untenable. But the media and the government says that when we raise our debt limit, it doesn't raise the debt. See, there's a war on reality now where they're normalizing that secret NSA spying, while we have open borders, is normal. We have to take all your rights, keep you safe from terrorists. That's why we fund the terrorists and leave the border open. By the way, we found the clip of Obama last year trying to get his immigration reform bill passed that just gets rid of the borders entirely, but selling it as a way to stop criminals coming in. When the feds themselves release them, 36,000 violent felons in the last 12 months, and the cities and counties and states are even worse. I have met with prosecutors from Travis County, I mean, folks that are prosecutors. They've been to this office to talk to me, it was about two years ago, about how the judges let illegals off for drunk driving for $10. It cost the Austinites, black, white, Hispanic, you're a citizen, on average over $7,000, an illegal $10 to maybe 100 And it's just an unwritten rule. It's the same all over the country. It's discriminatory, but see, under political correctness, and I don't hate these people, but my God, the globalists want a suction to bring people here to create balkanization, to create a Tower of Babel. So Obama can say the truth, but that's okay. Donald Trump says it, it's over. And then they have Bush, Romney, and Rubio. Come out and condemn Trump. Now, he's a paper tiger. I don't trust Trump. What he said is absolutely true, though. He's leading in the polls now. But meanwhile, look at Drudge. DNC's number one target is Rand Paul. That's from the Hill newspaper. Number one target is Rand Paul. Isn't that just special? You see, because in the polls, they know that he can win. But the Republican leadership, which are just placeholders for the Democrats and the establishment, they've got Trump out there putting out rhetoric that they know would get them ahead telling the truth. And so that way they can tear him up that's a faux candidate before he gets out of the race. And I may be wrong. Trump may be really running, but I've seen him pull this before. But Rand Paul, the Hill newspaper reports, is the leader. Democrats diss Paul. And then meanwhile, Bush, 
disregard Trump and Santorum. There you have it, because Rand Paul has a history of policies, anti-Patriot Act, anti-NSA illegal spying, anti-foreign aid, anti-illegal wars. That is so refreshing because he'll deliver when Obama didn't. There's some good things the Democrats do, like, hey, let's not have secret treaties giving corporations unlimited power, making them government. Democrats helped vote down TPP. Obama went and twisted their arms, threatened them, and got it passed. So, see, smart Democrats will vote for a Rand Paul. They will not vote for a Jeb Bush until hell freezes over, and we're going to get Hillary Clinton, who is the worst. She's even worse than Jeb Bush. Because Jeb Bush comes from an evil dynasty, totally out of control, can't trust him. But with Hillary, man, she really has an agenda socially to fry this country. And I personally can't vote for either one of them. I will not vote for lesser two evils that's so bad. Uh, so it's Rand Paul or bust, folks, for me. Ted Cruz, really like him. Did some bad stuff like supported TPP. So, And I've always said Rand Paul's the guy. And they're going to attack Rand Paul because of his relationship with me. And I think he should just say, I do a lot of interviews. Yeah, the guy's libertarian. He's a wacky guy, but he makes a lot of good points. Ah. You know, run to that. Be like Trump. Be flamboyant. Tell the truth. Why do you think I'm so popular? I'll tell the truth. But I'm not a ringer like Trump, in my opinion. But here's Obama saying exactly what Donald Trump said, except Trump went further and was more accurate. He just said, they're not sending their good people, they're sending their criminals and people on welfare, which is true. Obama's was more incendiary, but was true. Here it is. I mean, I, look, I, we should not be encouraging illegal immigration. What we should be doing is setting up a smart, legal immigration system that doesn't separate families, but does focus on making sure that uh, people who are dangerous, you know, people who uh, are, you know, gangbangers or, you know, or criminals, that we're deporting them as quickly as possible, that we're focusing our resources there. Wow, so we're racist. focusing on a strong border. A strong border. Uh, we've made improvements on all those fronts, but we could be doing even more if we had immigration. By reform. the way, we knew a year ago that Obama had dissolved the border and was letting illegals in children, you name it. They just focused on the kids to make people feel sad. Oh, it's children. The unaccompanied minors. So again, he's telling the truth there only in a limited way to say pass the bill knowing Democrats and the majority of Hispanics know we got to have a border and can't have unlimited illegals coming in. So he's telling his constituents something that's true, but he's lying saying the bill would do that. We come back, I have Jeb Bush's response, but within this, you can really just see the deception. Uh, briefly, ladies and gentlemen, we are funded by viewers and listeners like you. Our main sponsorship is the products we sell at InfoWarsStore.com. I want to thank you all for your support over the years as we try to do as much as we can to fight the globalists, and we've had great success. We're having store-wide free shipping on top of all the discounts that are already there in the month of July. That's uh, free shipping on all supplements, water filters, gear, seeds, DVDs, books, films, uh, T-shirts. Uh, T-shirts have 10% off across the board. All the come and take it made in America uh, belt buckles are 25% off. Biggest discount ever. On top of it, free shipping, InfoWarsStore.com. Got any questions, want to order over the phone, 888-253-3139. Seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Give us a call, 888-253-3139. We are sold out of Brain Force, our, our new just turbocharging uh, energy formula. Uh, Liver Shield sold out, Prostagard sold out, Child Ease sold out, Occupier sold out. We do have Survival Shield, Super High Power, Good Halogen, Nascent Iodine. Go learn the details of what it can do for you at InfoWarsLife.com. That is selling out soon. Super Male Vitality selling out soon. Super Female Vitality selling out soon. Oxy Powder selling out soon. Secret 12, Vitamin B12, the highest quality in stock. Silver Bullet, Colloidal Silver in stock. Old Oregano, back in stock. Winter Sun, D3, back in stock. DNA Force in stock. Lung Cleanse in stock. InfoWarsLife.com. 
If you want your X2 nation iodine, better get it. Don't know when we're getting it back in. This stuff is hard to source. Is it so high quality? The establishment has a balkanization, divide and conquer strategy. They have us all infighting with each other while offshore corporations loot the nation's pension funds, our resources, our industries, and just completely conquer us. Every day or two, without looking, I see articles out there of brutal uh, attacks. And they've got all the rock star hip hop sites and the rest of it where it's really popular. And what it is is racial attacks on white people by blacks. Uh, now, something that was acceptable culturally in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s would be, oh, good guys don't rob regular folks. They go outside a gay bar and they roll a, quote, queer, to use the colloquial uh, term, I think it's terrible, and rob them. And you're an aggravated felon. You're attacking somebody because of their, quote, sexual preference. No, you're a criminal that wants to feel good about the criminal activity you're involved in. You've got something of a conscience. So you target somebody you think subhuman. And that's what's happening across the United States, just the department's own numbers. And again, they vary state to state, area to area. But about 3% of the population... And it's all broken down in John Bowne's report and Paul Watson's report of black males. Basically, we're talking about 15 years of age up to about 40. And just a huge amount of the crime, but, but 25 times higher. Black against white versus white on black. And that's why the media, the controlled media, worshipped that horrible attack uh, in the Carolinas because at the church a few weeks ago because it allowed them to continue this myth that whites are this bloodthirsty, horrible, killer group. Because, yes, even though black males consist of one of the largest groups committing crime, violent crime, still it's a very small minority. But that minority of a minority is extremely aggressive. And if you go study the prison culture, it's a belief, and it's taught by the new Black Panthers and others, we've played the clips, that you go out and you mug and you attack white people. And you do it to Asians as well. We've all heard about, you know, get rid of these Asians with their grocery stores in our neighborhoods. Well, I mean, you burn down your own stores, who's going to go in there? So it's a cultural push, just like there was a cultural push for hoods, mainly white Greaser hoods is what they were called in the 50s to go out and beat up gay people. That's how this operates. It's the same thing. But no one will talk about it because it's politically incorrect. It doesn't fit into the narrative. Well, there's new footage. There's no audio. It's from a surveillance camera. It's on Infowars.com from Gateway Pundit. Brutal footage of unsuspecting Navy veteran knocked out by thug in knockout attack. The Navy veteran never saw it coming, and, and the teenager comes up, hits him from behind, punches him more in the face, stomps on him. A lot of times, uh, old folks uh, get knocked over and end up dying. There's a lot of footage of folks, you know, hitting the ground and dying. And it's just a fun thing for punk kids to do. And it's they attack old folks, but also in Austin, I've seen the footage... They attack hippies because they know hippies won't fight back. We've played the footage of just like thugs. I mean, like 16-year-old thugs, not even tough guys, just beating the daylights out of like six-foot-five giant hippies. And to the, and to the, and to the hippies, uh, you know, a gangbanger is a god. I mean, that's God attacking them, and they don't know what to do, and they'll actually start, we've played the footage, start begging and kneeling because, you know, they just can't understand what's happening. You don't have the gangbangers going up to some, you know, good old boy in a truck uh, and uh, attacking them because, well, they know there's a gun. And that's the socialist globalist dream is to make us like Chicago, New York, or D.C., where regardless of what color you are, you're disarmed so the thugs can just rule over you because they like to create hellish situations. And now I'm going to segue into what I mentioned earlier. I challenge you to go read the Fox News and CNN report and then to read the San Francisco Chronicle trying to make excuses for this. But 
this illegal had been in jail five times for aggravated felons, aggravated felonies. He'd been released this year, and they said that they they wouldn't turn him over to ICE because they're a sanctuary city. So they let folks out of jail. And then they go, just shoot your daughter for fun. And hey, she's white. She deserves it. Call it the shoot 'em up game. That's already going on. I mean, why not? Suspect in killing of San Francisco woman had been deported five times. CNN. And see, stuff like this is going to happen to the mainstream media's kids. Kate Steinell was walking on a busy pier in San Francisco with her father when there was a single popping sound in the air. We don't call this Son of Sam murders and top story anymore. Because Son of Sam, he was a white guy. He was Jewish. No, no, no. This is an illegal god. And so <laughs> she fell to the ground. He's never called an illegal alien, by the way. You notice the headline. She fell to the ground. Well, I mean, according to, the, she mean, she's white. I mean, you know, she's a military manufacturing center. And every nine months when she lays down on her back, reinforcements roll out. And you say, Khalid, kill the babies? Yes, kill the babies. Kill the little blue-eyed babies. Because one day they're going to grow up to kill our babies. What was that guy's name? Khalid Muhammad? Look up the Khalid Muhammad clip. He go around and give that speech everywhere. And I've heard that from the new Black Panther Party today. Totally protected by the government. Running around teaching this. I mean, what do you think's going on? Same thing. The man accused of firing the deadly shot, 45-year-old Juan Francisco Lopez Sanchez, is an undocumented immigrant. Oh, how about an undocumented migrant? That's the new proper. Is an undocumented immigrant, not an illegal alien, a repeat felon who's been deported five times to Mexico, according to immigration officials. It would have been a six, a federal law enforcement source told CNN, except authorities in San Francisco wanted him on drug-related warrant. And that's a spin article, because you can read later when he was released by other cities. They, you know, they say, oh, well, we, we're a sanctuary city. So U.S. Customs and Immigration Enforcement, which had Lopez... Sanchez in its custody in March after his release from federal prison turned him over to San Francisco deputies. I said they requested an immigration detainer asking that the agency be notified before Lopez was released. But he wasn't. But San Francisco is a city that doesn't honor. Just say sanctuary. Oh, is that not a proper term either? But San Francisco is a city that doesn't honor such requests and the sheriff's department released him. Frey Horn, chief legal counsel for the San Francisco County Sheriff, you mean the Ford Foundation, told CNN that he was let go because there was no legal case to detain the suspect. That's right. Doesn't matter you're here illegally and a five-time felon for assaults and drug dealing and everything else. We're going to release you so you can go shoot somebody for fun. <laughs> and you know it's all going to come back on all those people. That's how God works. Most of the people that know what they're doing in San Francisco and are involved in this, they, 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 they probably wonder why they have such horrible lives and why their kids die in car wrecks and why they're going to get cancer and why, you know, it's because God God's going to get you back. I mean, don't you know that's how, oh, there is no God. I know. you Still, your life sucks, doesn't it, you scum? It's going to get a lot worse, too. On Wednesday evening, he shot the 31-year-old woman at Pier 14 once in her upper body. How loving, according to police. He was found about a mile away and an hour later and arrested. CNN cannot determine on Friday if he has an attorney. Oh, one will be provided. She was loving, smart, beautiful. CNN only reporting on this because he shot her. He'd have raped her, stabbed her, and her family even complained. They'd call him racist. Just a mentally ill person. I mean, she was smoking hot. That's why he killed her. Just total jealousy, total hatred. Saw a happy family out. His father told the San Francisco Chronicle there was one pop and his daughter fell to the ground. Video shows several people trying to help the young woman. A racist helping a white person. She just kept saying, Dad, help me, help me. She fought for her life but died. Hey, isn't it going to be better when all the whites are dead? I mean, white people are inherently bad. So, hey, and a lot of people out there are like, kill that military manufacturing center. So, normally this will be in the local news, uh, never on CNN. So, uh, again, I'm eating my hat here because they're telling the truth, though spinning everything. 
Talking about a young woman shot to death this week while walking with her father at Pier 14 in San Francisco. She fought for her life, Sullivan said. They said how strong she was, but they couldn't save her. And that's what the General Hospital uh, had to say about her. Her heart stopped twice on the way to the hospital, and she died in surgery. Family members called her loving, smart, and beautiful. Her cousin said she loved her mother and father more than anything. Well, but, I mean, she was shot by an illegal god. I mean, an illegal immigrant. Excuse me. Uh, several of the dozen or more people at the pedestrian pier took photos of the suspect and showed them to police. Suspect, now here's the best part. Suspect had seven felony convictions. See, I was saying five. Uh, people think I exaggerate. The truth is I usually, my brain, for some reason, downgrade stuff. He'd been deported five times. He had seven felony convictions. Then I said five convictions. Excuse me. It's worse than I said. Excuse me. I said it turned out that Lopez Sanchez... I said it turned Lopez Sanchez over to San Francisco authorities on March 26th for an outstanding drug warrant. But get this, the agency requested an immigration detainer, but Horn, that runs the agency for San Francisco, says San Francisco officials believe that violates the Fourth Amendment rights against unreasonable searches and seizures. He's a convicted seven-time felon, deported five times. They go, here's his background, you know, charge him on your latest stuff. Give him back to us if you ever let him out. And they go, no, it violates the Fourth Amendment when it doesn't. It's your record. You're a felon. It can be transferred. But San Francisco has the NSA basically based in it, spying on everyone illegally to make sure the crime continues, the government drug dealing, all of it. This is an actively evil government. Do you understand that? Actively evil. And I have to talk to the Austin police chief, who I don't think is a bad person, but he wouldn't be there if he didn't play ball with them. And he's like, well, we can't really throw the book at the illegals because then they won't call police and trust us to solve other crimes. The illegals want people that commit rapes and robberies to go to jail. They want them to be deported. This hoax idea that Hispanics, most of them who are Americans and born here, want a bunch of criminals running around is bull. But again, everyone's so afraid of the political correctness. The department would have returned Lopez Sanchez if there had been a court order or charges were dropped. But see, the feds now have basically stopped all deportation as of a year ago. And it describes her here. When she got shot, she said, Dad, I've been shot. I don't feel well. Let's look at a photo of this young lady. And the guy that killed her, deadered in a hammer. And here's what's really scary, and what L Lulac and, all, and, and, and other Mexican supremacist groups, Machi La Raza won't tell you, most of the crimes, in fact, more than 70%, depending on the state, committed by these criminals are against other Hispanics. They are wreaking havoc in these communities. And just get away with it. Serial killing, you name it. And now... It's coming out that serial killers from Russia, Germany, Europe, uh, Africa are tourism coming here to come here and kill people and then fly back to their countries. That's something the government wants to keep real quiet. Look into it. Murder tourism. I mean, we're just a wide open joke. But they're spying on all of us and have troops at 4th of July. And, oh, they canceled 4th of July for military bases in England and other countries because ISIS might attack it. No, they just wanted to cancel it in the UK as a, as, a, as a way to rub George Washington's nose in it. Now, I, I talked about the new Black Panther Party, because the original Black Panthers actually had some good aims and tried to help people and got set up and destroyed. And I've interviewed a lot of those folks that have survived. But the old Black Panther Party is not the new one. And Khalid Muhammad was so radical, he got thrown out of the Nation of Islam. And I'm all about self-sufficiency, shopping in your own community. I think a lot of things Nation of Islam says are good. Then they sell these horrible things, you know, on the other side, like, you know, get rid of these Chinese people in our neighborhoods. But see, that plays to the racism, the tribalism that's, that's, that's getting stronger under modern liberal multiculturalism. I mean, folks, Viacom had a music awards thing. I meant to cover it last week where 
the majority of the rappers that got up basically saying about killing police with, with backgrounds of burning police cars. And people are like, well, aren't you sick of out-of-control cops? You don't have a civil war. That's not going to fix it. The globalists set the cops up this way and then now want to have a civil war to break the country down more. I just don't want instability. I don't want to give George Soros what he wants. And the average cop isn't bad and doesn't deserve to be shot in their squad car. I expect to be treated for what I behave like. Not shot and killed because I'm white. Not shot and killed because you're black. Not shot and killed because you're gay or straight or whatever else. That's real libertarian ideas. Not, you'll pay for my sex change and you'll let me teach your five-year-old about it. Get the hell away from my five-year-old, you creep. What, I'm a creep because I, I think I'm a woman? No, because you want to get involved with kids. We used to call that pedophilia. See how they invert everything? And then guilt nice Americans of every race, color, and creed into going along with this. Now, let's go, since I, this is his debate with Anthony Hilder. But, uh, but he, he, he gave this speech hundreds of times. And this is what's taught. If you wonder what the knockout game and all this is, and then they politically correct, cover it up. Knockout game goes on in Austin, Texas. The stabbing game, everything. Let's go ahead and go to the clip. Get out of town by Sunday. I say if they don't get out of town, we kill the men, we kill the women, we kill the children, we kill the babies, we kill the blind, we kill the cripple, we kill the crazy, we kill the faggots, we kill the lesbians. I said, God damn it, we kill them all. He said, well, why kill them all? Why kill the women? First, why kill the babies? Just little innocent blue-eyed babies. Because God damn it, they're gonna grow up one day to rule your babies. Kill them now. Why kill the women in South Africa? I said kill the women because the women are the military manufacturing center. And every nine months they lay down on their backs and reinforcement rolls out from between their legs. So shut down the military manufacturing center by killing the white woman. Why kill the elder crackers? The old crepit crackers in South Africa. How in the hell you think they got old? They got old oppressing and killing black people. Yes, I said, kill a cripple, kill a hell kill a hell for a kill a hell, God damn it. All right, that's enough. And then he goes on, and this is all, of course, in the United States to help promote the same view. And they've got new Black Panther Party members famously down in Houston saying, currently, go out, mug, rob. When the average white person is a totally obsessed, ultra uh, mind controlled, self guilt, idiot. And this is what's being promoted. And there's the idea appease politically whoever's putting this type of rhetoric out by groveling. You'll never hear out of Khalid Muhammad's mouth when he was given speeches about 52% of black people or 51% of black people being killed in the womb. You'll never hear about plans to ship the narcotics into the communities or, or, or any of this coming from the big mega banks. It's all, no, that white person over there driving down the road in their old beat up car, probably got less money than you do. They hate you and they're the reason you're not doing good. What a lie. So I thought since I mentioned that, I'd actually play the clip. We play that maybe once a year, because if I mention it, it just sounds too insane. Why not actually play it? That's what's being taught. You know what? I don't care if they're a black baby, a white baby, or Hispanic baby, or whatever baby they are. I care about them as much because I care about human life, and I have empathy. And we need to have empathy again in this nation and worldwide. By the way, the Greeks are saying they're going to have their food cut off now, and European Parliament president uh, needed to urgently... Uh, discuss humanitarian aid to Greece. And it has been a landslide. 62% have voted to not continue going deeper into the euro, deeper into debt, and to default. At least Mexico and other countries would default on their debts. I mean, o Obama says that we don't, don't need to you know, ever have a problem. Just keep raising it. Our debt comparatively is as big as Greece's. Oh, but we're too big to fail. No, we're not. And we're going into very serious waters this fall, this winter, and next year. And we'll be here on the radio covering it, raising the alarm to all humans across this planet. we got to work together for basic freedom, property rights, sovereignty, family, life, healthy food.
California's passed forced inoculations. Now they've got bills to forcibly inoculate adults. Everybody, they're coming for us. Infowars.com. See you tomorrow, 11 a.m.